Robert Anderson, everybody. Give it up for Robert Anderson. The absolute perfect song for this morning, huh? Do all you can. And I want to say thank you to our practitioner, Art Morales, for being on platform today. Thank you for your beautiful prayer and your reading and your consciousness. And I definitely want to say thank you to Cindy DeMoyer, who is holding consciousness in the back, and she will be available after the service. If you want something that you'd like to know and affirm in a greater way, just visit her over here in the prayer forest, and she'll be happy to do an affirmative spiritual prayer with you. And definitely a big shout out to Kathy, another practitioner of ours, and Kensho Lynn Silverston that you heard from already that went to be with the kids. And I just want to say that the person that was up here giving the announcement about the um, true interfaith Thanksgiving Eve service is Kensho Lynn Silverston, the, the uh, Buddhist uh, priest that's going to be presenting as well. And he didn't introduce himself as that, so I wanted to make sure that you knew that that's who that was. He just, uh, he's one of our newest members here at the Center for Spiritual Living. So welcome, peace, love, and blessings to each and every one of you. And I do want to shout out over there to Eric as usual. Thank you so much. And Eric, yes. I absolutely love what Art said about it last week. He said, uh, you know, Eric is, is, has, kind of has the rope, you know. He's the, he's the one that's, that's really handling all of this and making it all happen. So we're so grateful for that. And Eric, is there any way that we can lighten up um, because you guys are all dark. <laughs> it's like I'm speaking to a dark room, which, you know, happens, but <laughs> not this morning. I wanted to start out by saying I am so excited today because I get to see my grandmother today. I'm so happy. You know, we celebrated a couple of months ago her 85th birthday, and she is an amazing being in my world. Super grateful for this woman. And I came across something this weekend that really made me think of her. Did, have you seen that? little joke uh, that's out where the guy says, um, I added my grandma to my speed dial. Does that mean I have her on Instagram? Do you get it? <laughs> I know, it's Cordy. But I, <laughs> I, I got granny on Instagram. Let's just know that. <laughs> so, you know, our talk title, our theme for the month is Let's Get Real. And man, are we getting real this month, aren't we? And our talk title today is Daring Greatly. And when I selected that talk title and worked on my talk earlier this week, little did I know that we would have so many opportunities this week to really reach in, to really reach in and find our center and realize in so many different ways how we get to show up in our life daring greatly. So that's what we're going to explore together this morning. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. The events that has happened this week, I was sad. I was in a funk. I, was, I woke up in a funk yesterday morning. I had a really hard time fighting it off until I went ahead and did what it was that I was planning on presenting to you guys this morning in regards to our, our theme and our talk title. And I allowed myself to feel the feelings. And I allowed myself to be human. And I allowed myself to cry. And folks, what that does is it allows us to reach in and be real with ourselves. And when we're real with ourselves, we're not resisting and pushing away that which wants to naturally flow through us. And when we allow what naturally wants to flow through us in its pure and total powerful authenticity, then we get to show up in the world as real. And so I got to do that yesterday morning. And I will tell you though, I didn't hang out with it too long. I certainly didn't invite it to eat lunch with me, and I didn't go to bed with it. And so that's another thing that we're here talking about this morning and exploring, and it is super powerful. So Eric, if we could go to the first slide. 
you know, the inspiration for my talk title is from Brene Brown. And this is what she says about daring greatly. Daring greatly is not about winning or losing, it's about courage. In a world where scarcity and shame dominate and feeling afraid has become second nature, vulnerability is subversive, uncomfortable. I was pretty uncomfortable yesterday morning. I was feeling pretty vulnerable as the tears streamed down my face and I couldn't even put a finger on why I was so overcome with grief, but I just allowed it. But it was uncomfortable. It's even a little dangerous at times and without question, putting ourselves out there means there's a far greater risk of feeling hurt. But as I look back on my life and what daring greatly has meant to me, I can honestly say that nothing is as uncomfortable, dangerous, and hurtful as believing that I am standing on the outside of my own life and looking in and wondering what it would be like if I had the courage to show up and let myself be seen. How many of you know what that feels like to show up and let yourself be seen? and the uncomfortableness that kind of comes with that, and the vulnerability that can come with that, yet that deliciousness of authenticity too, that stepping into the realness of who we really are can feel so empowering and inspiring. So it kind of goes both ways, doesn't it? At least it does with me. So can we go to the next slide? So how many of you can relate? <laughs> how many of you can relate? <laughs> you know, I, I just know on some level that this is what Brene was talking about. You know, how, how many times have you forced yourself to put on that smile and to act all chippy and cheery when inside you just want to cry or maybe go like this or go like this or whatever it is that you might be feeling inside, but, but you put the little white happy face up for those in front of you because they're smiling back at you. You know, folks, there's something magical that happens when we are able to show up authentically and feel our feelings and be able to trust and honor and respect those in front of us to be who we really are. Because when we do that, it dissolves the barriers. It brings down the walls. And what happens when we dissolve barriers and bring down the walls? Then we start having authentic communication. Then we start having real, honest processing. Then we start building a world that works for everyone. And that's what I'm all about. How about you? Are you guys up for that? Now, there's another side to this picture. You know, another thing that we, we talk about and I, I preach about is, you know, that whole fake it till you make it kind of thing. That's a little different in my opinion. It's that part that I said that I didn't have lunch with it and I certainly didn't go to bed with it last night. I let it flow through me. I allowed myself to feel the feelings but then I knew, I knew that that wasn't the end. I knew that there was a next step. There was something I needed to take from this and I needed to take what I knew to be true. And as we're going over in our philosophy of Jesus class, where does it always start? Seek ye first the kingdom of God always. And so I knew that even when I was like that apple and I allowed myself to feel the feeling, my next step was to seek ye first the kingdom of God. My next step was to go to the truth principles and to my spiritual practice and be able to step through the rest of my day uplifted with what I knew to be true. So you see, it's this dance. It's this authentic dance that we do. Next side. Thank you, Eric. So vulnerability is not about fear and grief and disappointment. It's the birthplace of everything that we're hungry for. I'm hungry for those honest, real, authentic communications. I'm hungry for the dissolving of all those barriers and blockages. I'm hungry for unification 
for the opportunity to share and show up and reveal and be a love so powerful that it truly dissolves all fear, all hate, all need to hurt. I'm hungry for that. How many of you out there are hungry for that? How many? Okay, right on. Next slide, please. So this is my prayer. Remove the veils so that I might see what is really happening here and not be intoxicated by my stories and my fears. Every day, remove that veil so that I can see what's really happening here. What's really happening here, folks? I'm sure I could ask each one of you and you'd probably give me your own, your own take on that, but there's a 30,000 foot level take on it. You know, this week it quickly became not about that red cup, didn't it? Didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really put things into perspective, didn't it? And for those that don't know the whole controversy about certain groups of people were incensed with Starbucks for not putting any holiday cheer on their red cup. It's really not about that, is it? It is not. We're going to dive in this morning and, and really explore what it is about. So, you know, it is, it is said that what had happened on Friday and, and, of course, the things that had happened earlier this week and other parts of the world, too, were kind of based on terrorist actions, right? You guys are familiar with that, I'm sure. And those terrorists, I firmly believe that when anyone terrorizes anything, it's because they're feeling terrorized within themselves. I think people lash out in cruelty and meanness and hatred is because they don't have any love for themselves. They don't feel any love. They don't know any better. They know not what they do. I have to take that stand. I have to believe that. And do you know why? Because I... I believe in something greater than that kind of behavior. I believe in something greater than that kind of action. And my heart goes out to, and my tears fell down all over my face yesterday for all of those beautiful souls that, for lack of a better way to put it, took one for the team. They took one for the team of love, right? Because of what happened, how many people are talking about peace? How many people are talking about sharing more love within their life? I mean, I know I am. I know the people that are around me are. And I know that I'm bringing that conversation up with people. I was out in public yesterday and overheard a couple of people start talking about it. You know, oh, isn't it terrible, that thing that happened in Paris? And they started really getting into the nitty gritty. And that's an example, folks, of what I mean when I say I didn't have lunch with it and I didn't go to bed with it. There's one thing to feel it and to go in and connect our humanity and our soul to all of the people along the world because of what happens, it awakens that impulse within us to love and create peace. And so I just mentioned to them, you know, my take on it, my perspective. Asked them a few forward focusing questions. What can we do? What is mine to do? What is yours to do? Do we want to talk about what happened or do we want to talk about what inspired it in us? And what did it inspire in you? I'm not sure if you might be there yet, but we're going to walk through that this morning. We're going to talk about it. Because in any dark time, there's a tendency to veer towards fainting over about how much there was wrong and how much is unmended in this world. There's a tendency to do that, but don't focus on that. I'm here to invite you not to focus on that. There's also a tendency to fall into being weakened by dwelling on what's outside of your reach, that feeling of, oh, there's nothing I can do about it, feeling like it's out of your control, oh, woe is me. Where does that get us, folks? Does that get us where we wanna go? Does that? Does that support our vision in any way, shape, or form? Although there is a tendency to do that, there is something that we can do about it. We cannot focus there. We can focus on the flip side, which is what I'm here to remind us of this morning, and you're here to remind me of. 
that we are needed. We are needed, folks, and that's what we can know. Although we might meet resistance, we more so will meet souls who will hail us and love us and guide us, and we will know with them when they appear. You see, we'll attract those people. I know that you are all believers of love. I know that because I know most of you very well. So raise your hand if you're a believer in love. Raise your hand if you're a believer in peace. If you truly believe that peace begins within me, peace begins within you. So you've raised your hand. You're a believer, right? So are you pledging to be a believer? Are you pledging to step into your world and your life in a greater way? To remember what it's like to be in a state of grace and to be love in all of those different areas. Ours is not the task of fixing all of the world. That's not our task, at least not fixing all of the world at once. But of stretching out to mend the parts of the world that are within our reach. Stretch out and provide your light, provide your love within that part of the world that's within your reach. That's within the reach of your shining light. And any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another, to assist some portion in their world or your world. And I know some of you, some of you out here do that all the time. And you bring so much light and so much love into people's worlds that need it so desperately. And you show up as beautiful angels. And I am so grateful to know you and to experience your light. So do you see where I'm going there is if you think you got to fix the whole world at once, that too can be overbearing. It might keep you from even wanting to get up out of bed in the morning. But just keep it within the world that you know. What is before you to do? What is before you to be? We're all bright, shining lights. We really are. And there is a portion of the world that you are here to assist with and to help immensely with. So I'm gonna share a story with you. It's a story that was posted in the New York Times and it's, I think, very poignant to what we're covering today. It's a story that was written by a gentleman sharing a, a little bit about his experience in the past year. During this past year, I've had three instances of car trouble, a blowout on a freeway, a bunch of blown fuses in an out of gas situation, and they all happened while I was driving other people's cars. Each time when these things happened, I was disgusted with the way people didn't bother to help. I was stuck on the side of the freeway hoping that my friend's roadside service would show just watching tow trucks cruise past me. But you know who came to my rescue all three times? Immigrants, Mexican immigrants. One of those guys stopped to help me with the blowout, even though he had his whole family of four in tow. I was on the side of the road for close to three hours with my friend's big Jeep. I put signs in the windows, big signs that said, need a jack and offered money, nothing. Just as I was about to give up and start hitching, a van pulled up and a guy bounded out. He sized up the situation and called for his daughter who spoke a little bit of English. He conveyed through her that he had a jack, but it was too small for the big Jeep, so we would need to brace it. Then he got a saw from the van and cut a section out of a big log on the side of the road. We rolled it over, put his jack on top, and we were in business. I started taking the wheel off and broke his tire iron. It was one of those collapsible ones, and I wasn't careful, and I snapped the head clean off. No worries, though. He ran to the van and handed it to his wife, and she was gone in a flash down the road to buy a new iron. So when she came back, we finished the job with a little sweat and a little bit of cussing, because the log started to give, and I was a very happy man. The two of us were filthy and sweaty. His wife produced a large water jug for us to wash our hands in. I tried to put a 20 in the man's hand, but he wouldn't take it. So instead, I went up to the van and gave it to his wife as quietly as I could. I thanked them up one side and down the other. 
I asked the little girl where they lived, thinking maybe I'd send them a gift because they were so awesome in helping me. She said they lived in Mexico, that they were in Oregon so mommy and daddy could pick cherries for the next few weeks, and then they were gonna pick some peaches and return home. After I said my goodbye and started walking back to the Jeep, the girl called out and asked if I had had lunch. When I told her no, she ran up to me and handed me a tamale. The family, undoubtedly poorer than just about everyone else on that stretch of highway, working in a seasonal basis where time is money, took a couple of hours out of their day to help a strange guy on the side of the road while people in tow trucks just passed me by. But we weren't done yet. I thanked him again and walked back to my car and opened the foil-wrapped tamale. I was starving at this point. And what did I find inside? $20 bill. I rolled around and ran to the van and the guy rolled down his window. He saw the 20 in my hand and just started shaking his head no. All I could think to say was por favor, por favor, with my hands out. The guy just smiled and with what looked like great concentration, he said in English, today you, tomorrow me. Then he rolled up his window and drove away with his daughter waving to me from the back. I sat in my car and had the best tamale I had ever eaten, and I just started to cry. It had been a rough year, nothing had gone my way, and this was so out of left field that I just couldn't handle it. In the several months since then, I've changed a few tires, given a few rides to gas stations, and even drove 50 miles out of my way to give a girl a ride to the airport. I won't accept money, but every time that I am able to help, I just remember, today you, tomorrow me. So my question to you is how might this world be if we simply loved one another? What would change if we lived in a spirit of service and the spirit of today you, tomorrow me? You see, folks, that's the world that we do have reach in. That's the world where we, we do get to get out of bed every day and shine our brilliant light and hold out our hand when needed and open our hearts when we are in need. We get the opportunity to show up and be vulnerable and that's what daring greatly is all about. It's about being willing to feel everything within our heart and our soul to the very core of our being so that we may show up in service to others with a great deal of love and compassion and understanding because we've given ourselves the right to feel. That's what creates peace in this world. And I do believe that it's possible and I do believe that it is happening right now. Like I said before, I had tears rolling down my cheeks thanking those that took one for the love team on Friday. Because how many of you are much more willing right now to let love and peace enter your hearts and be a spreader of those things? How many of you are so much more inspired to do that today? Yeah. That's right. So, Eric, if we could go to the next slide. Being positive means that you have faith in solutions that are available to any problem as long as you are willing to listen and follow through on guidance to take positive action. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Next slide. There's our roomyism for the day. <laughs> you knock at the door of reality. You shake your thought wings, loosen your shoulders, and open. Today, you, tomorrow, me. So we're talking about love, folks. Can we go on to the next slide? I don't. Uh, 
You have the power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Next slide. So I love this. I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but when, when Mr. Rogers was a boy and he would see scary things in the news, his mother would tell him, look for the helpers. You will always find the people who are helping. So that's what I am inviting for all of us to do, is to look for the helpers when these things come up and be the helpers. Today, you, tomorrow, me. Next slide. Get into the love part. Here we go. I know I promised you at the beginning of the month that I would use this slide every single Sunday that I'm speaking because this is what I'm affirming. I am a citizen of the universe helping to raise the vibration of love on earth. How about the rest of you? Let's everybody say that together. I am a citizen of the universe helping to raise the vibration of love on earth. Next slide. So it's truly only a choice each and every time, folks, fear or love. And anytime you see somebody choosing fear, it's generally because they're not feeling loved. So when that time comes, when our instantaneous response to folks that are acting out of fear is to just love them up, then we've made it, folks. We've made it. We've become a citizen of the universe helping to raise the vibration of love on this planet. I believe it's possible for world peace. I declare it, declare it, and demand it, and command it. I even have a slide on that. <laughs> so next slide, next slide, because we're not gonna go through this. Imagine what seven billion humans could accomplish if we all loved and respected each other. Imagine. Do you feel that in this room we all love and respect one another? Imagine what each one of us goes out and shines our light on in our individual worlds. We are already causing world peace to occur within each one of us. Next slide, Eric. My purpose to move people to dream bigger, to touch people to do good, and to inspire people to take action. Does that sound good to you guys? Would you be willing to take that on in an even greater way today? I know many of you already do that. Most of you already do this. But there's, there's always that opportunity to shine our light, isn't there? Sometimes we turn the corner and we see darkness where there wasn't darkness before and we can shine our light there. Next slide, Eric. So we are love. Next slide. So this is it. This is what we get to do. We're planting little love seeds. See, I'm planting the little heart seeds. So my invitation to you is go plant love wherever you are. Go plant it. Plant love everywhere, and it will seed and it will sprout in unlimited, unbelievable ways that you cannot possibly imagine. I promise you, it will. And I promise you that the universe supports us in every way. You know, yesterday when I said I woke up feeling really, really sad, and I just had tears streaming down my face, and I, it was like I felt like I couldn't shake it. We were sitting at the breakfast table, and weeks ago, Tony had gotten me a dozen roses, a dozen red roses. And I absolutely love flowers. For most of you that know, whenever I get flowers, I dry them and I use them in ceremonies and things. It was truly unbelievable. He gasped and he said, look at the roses. And we looked at the roses and of course, this was weeks ago, so if you could imagine what <laughs> A dozen red roses looked like after a few weeks, I was waiting for them to dry out, but I hadn't emptied the water yet. They had all started sprouting. There were these sprouts of bright green sprouts off of each stem. I had never seen that happen before. Folks, that's what shifted me. The universe supports us in every way. One of the things I miss so much about my old home is I love raising rose bushes. I love having roses. And I, I've been bummed that I haven't had rose bushes living here. And those roses that he gave me started sprouting. Bright, green, beautiful sprouts over these stems. 
that's God, folks. The divine was speaking to me and tapping me on the shoulder and saying, there it is. There is always life. There is always hope. There is always love and the divine and the desire to grow and thrive anywhere we choose to look if we choose to open our eyes to it. Next slide, Eric. So I declare world peace. How about you? I declare world peace. I declare world peace. Let's say it together. I declare world peace. Yes. So how many of you are willing to go plant those love seeds this week? Plant those love seeds. Yes. And shine your light. And if you are around people that are caught up with the, oh, my God, what's the world coming to? Oh, woe is me. We're just headed for total destruction. My Lord, <laughs> that does not feel good at all, does it? Shine your light. Ask them some questions. Give them something to hope for. Build them up. Invite them to be the peace that we wish to see in the world. And as we continue to go out and invite people to do that, and then invite them to invite people to do that, what's that going to create? Because, folks, it doesn't take the whole world. It doesn't take the whole world to share love and peace. It just takes a group of committed people, right? Because we've proved that over and over and over again, that true change and true shift comes from a group of committed people believing in their purpose and what it is that they're doing. So I declare world peace. Next slide. So there's the, there's the sprouts. Can you believe that? Have anybody ever seen roses do that after weeks of being in a vase? I love it. Spirit is always supporting us in every way. And I'm going to let them keep sprouting, and I'm going to plant them. I'm going to plant them. <laughs> I'm going to grow rose bushes from scratch, folks. So that's what we do when we plant those seeds, those little heart seeds of love. Let it grow from scratch in every area of your life and watch yourself create peace on this planet. And here's another thing for you, something that I'm going to, it's not a dare, I'm going to invite, but I'm going to strongly invite each one of us for the next week, give up complaining. Don't allow one single complaint to leave your mouth. Give up complaining. And when we give up complaining, we give up judging. And when we give up judging, we start seeing things for all of the good and the potential that's within them. And when we start doing that, we create peace. We plant love seeds everywhere. So how many of you are willing to give up complaining for a whole seven days? You give it up. No complaining. If you have something that you'd like to see a shift in, you build it up. You see the potential. You see the love in it. So let's go forth and plant those seeds of love. Join me in prayer. Join me in prayer knowing that we are right here, right now, completely connected to this divine energy and essence of love, to the great energy that can sprout life from what looks like no life. For we are connected to the unbelievable energy that has created everything that has come before us and will create everything after us. And through this connected energy of love, we know that we're individual divine expressions. We're individual divine loving units going around this world, planting those heart seeds, planting them in good fertile soil, watering them, allowing them to grow and flourish within our world. And as they grow and flourish within our world, they're reaching out and touching the world of all others. We are peace. We allow it to flow through us. We allow it to catch on in this world. And through that, fear dissolves. All of the blockages and barriers that come from that completely dissolve and break down because we have the courage to be vulnerable and feel our feelings and show up and provide love and compassion for all that we meet. And we also know that even though today you, tomorrow me, we know that we are always completely supported by the divine in all ways. And so we, we look at reality and we put on those wings and we open up and we say yes to love. We say yes to peace. And with grateful hearts, we allow it to flourish through our lives and through the lives of our community and then through the lives of the world. 
I declare world peace, and so it is. <laughs>